I've got 20 of the biggest mistakes that you can make as a YouTuber. And yes, that's a Joshua tree. I am out in the middle of the desert. So I'm out here doing some desert exploring, hanging out in Joshua Tree, Yucca Valley, this whole region. But I wanted to put together a video about some of the biggest mistakes that people make on their YouTube channels. And hopefully from this video, you'll be able to create better content and make engaging videos that people want to watch. If you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do a lot of awesome filmmaking tutorials, camera reviews, some YouTube training, all that good stuff. Also, I like to make adventure films in places like this. So let's talk about some of the biggest mistakes that beginner YouTubers make. Number one is copying other YouTubers. Now, this is something that I see more and more, and it's one of those things that it might seem like a great idea to basically copy someone because obviously they're doing it right. So if you copy them, you could get the same kind of fans and fame and all that good stuff. Well, that's not the case. You can definitely get inspired by other people, but as soon as you start just straight copying other people, that's where you're gonna fail, and that's where people are gonna not enjoy your channel, and they're gonna click off, they're not gonna subscribe, none of that good stuff. There's people out there I've seen that are copying big YouTubers, like literally doing the exact same videos and in the same style with the same kind of content in it. There's one thing to be inspired by people, but to straight up just copy someone and then use that as a template for your own videos, that's not the way to do it. Number two is having no plan or no story for what it is that you're doing. So you need to plan out your content. You need to think about what it is that you're shooting before you actually start shooting so that when it comes time to turn on the camera, you have a plan or you have like a story that you're following. Just if you're shooting content and it's just kind of like following through the day, doing kind of like whatever, it's not that exciting. The YouTubers that really do well create a plan before they actually hit that record button. So bad sound is number three on the list because having good sound is essential to keeping people engaged on your videos. If you hear wind noises or you can't hear the audio, people are not gonna watch your videos, so you need to have good sound. This is why you use a microphone, like a shotgun microphone on top of your camera, and then you use that wind cover, that big furry thing, because that gets you better sound because you're not hearing all the external wind and sound is important. If you have good clear sound, then people will wanna watch your content. If you have bad sound, people are gonna click off pretty quickly. Number four is shot composition. So depending on what it is that you're shooting, if you're too close, if you're too far, if someone's not centered properly in the frame or they're you know too far off to the side, something will feel off in your content. So you gotta think about your composition. You gotta use good rules of composition to get good footage. And guys, one thing before we continue on with these tips, I do have some additional content per tip. I'll put some links down below in the description where you guys can check out more in-depth videos about each tip. So I highly suggest checking some of those out if you want some more training on some of these specific tips. Okay, number five is bad lighting. So for example, if I walk out to the sun, right now I'm exposed for the shade. This is bad lighting, it's overexposed. And the same thing happens if you are in the shade or something and you go underexposed, that's bad lighting. So you gotta make sure that your exposure's correct and then also if you're doing like sit down videos, like I do a lot of content where I sit down in my home studio office, you need to make sure the lighting's good. You need to make sure that you can see the face, you make sure that you have good lighting behind you. There's not like weird bright windows that are completely overexposed behind you, not something super dark. You just need to have good looking lighting for the content that you're shooting. So it has to work with the content that you're shooting. Something to think about. Okay, the next one is unnecessary insert shots. So for example, that really had no reason whatsoever for this video except for that I'm out here in the desert, but it really didn't really make sense with what it is that I'm shooting because I'm doing tips on YouTube. So that was an unnecessary insert shot. So if it really like detracts from what you're shooting and it pulls your audience out, people might just click off your video. So make sure when you're using insert shots or you're putting some additional footage that it makes sense with the storyline that you're going about or like the video that you're creating. You wanna make sure that it fits in the whole scheme of things. So I mean, technically, yeah, an insert shot of me walking on a log works because I'm hanging out in the middle of the desert, but it doesn't necessarily work because this is a tip video. Number seven is too many transitions. So like if you're like all the time going from here to here and you're just kind of whipping around and you're just kind of doing all these crazy transitions, they look cool, but at a certain point it does get annoying after a while. 
So limit your transitions to what makes sense for your content. Not just putting them in there just to put them in there. You want to put them in so it makes sense or that it keeps like your audience engaged. But you definitely have to think about it and not just put them in all the time, everywhere. Sometimes they don't always make sense. Okay, so number eight is too much B-roll. And you'll see this all the time if people are really B-roll happy. They're just putting a ton of B-roll in your video. Well, unless your video is like a cinematic kind of like experience type of video, then like if you do too much B-roll, then people are gonna lose interest because they want more story. So you gotta have a balance of good story, B-roll, but not just do these like ridiculous cinematic sequences that go on forever with tons of B-roll because too much B-roll is not a good thing. So if you're gonna do like cinematic sequences kind of throughout your video, that's cool, but limit it. Don't do like 30, 40 seconds all the time. Maybe do like a 10 second one or a five second, maybe a 15, you know, something shorter so that when someone's watching your video, they're not sitting there being like, oh, another B-roll sequence. Here we go, this is kind of boring. Um, yeah, you don't want that. You know what, I'm gonna do another one here. So number nine is using cinematic in everything that you do. Cinematic B-roll, cinematic style, I'm gonna shoot cinematic color, I'm gonna do cinematic color settings. It gets old after a while and yes, I definitely do it sometimes on my channel, I'll say I'm doing a cinematic this or that. Obviously it's a good keyword to use, but if all of your stuff is like cinematic but it's not actually cinematic, people will lose interest. I've seen this a lot on YouTube where people are commenting on good cinematic videos and they're saying things like, oh it's great to finally see see a cinematic video that's actually cinematic and not just saying it's cinematic. So don't put cinematic in everything that you do. For those of you who are like tutorial creators, for those of you who like to create this kind of content, don't just use that keyword. You gotta make sure it makes sense when you're actually producing cinematic tutorials and those kind of videos. Okay, let's go somewhere else. Okay, so let's go on to number 10 and that is lingering or just kind of like holding on shots for too long. You gotta move quickly with YouTube content. It just, things wanna move quickly. So if I was just to, like if I was to, uh, like if I was thinking and then I didn't cut out some of the dead space or like you're having a conversation, unless the time in between shots is motivated, then you shouldn't put like a bunch of dead space in your video. You're gonna lose the interest of different people. It has to make sense to put dead space in. That's why you see like YouTube content move so fast is because people want quick, they want concise, they want things happening now. If they're getting an information piece, if they're getting a tutorial like this, then they want it quick. They don't want it pushed through 20, 30, 40 minutes of content. Another one is is way too much chit chat. So just like having a long conversation on camera, sometimes you need to cut it down a little bit. And I do this a lot, I'll talk a lot, and then I end up cutting more and more in post. Like I'll talk for 20 minutes, but cut it down to a 10 minute video. How weird are these, by the way? This is a very odd plant. All the plants out here are out to get you in some way. Okay, number 12 is the wrong music choice. So you need to figure out what your video is about, what kind of content that you're creating, and find a type of music that fits that theme. If you have music that doesn't fit your theme, it will feel off, people will click off, they don't wanna watch. I get all my music from Musicbed. They are a great resource for YouTubers to get quality music, but also all of it is licensed for your channel because when you use unlicensed music, then you can't get paid for the content that you're creating. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna have copyright claims hit your video. So music choice in two different ways. First, of just getting the proper content that's gonna fit your channel, and two, licensing so that your stuff doesn't get flagged and so you can make money off of your videos. Okay, number 13. Okay, so number 13 is not uploading enough content. I highly suggest uploading a new video at least once a week, at the bare minimum. Now you can do more than that if you can create more content, but if you do one a week, you stay relevant, you'll keep your subscribers happy, and you'll continue to grow. If you are uploading like once a month, or if you don't have a schedule at all and you upload like five videos one week and then nothing for a month, then you're gonna lose the interest of your subscribers. They wanna know that there's consistency. They wanna know that you're creating content and you're gonna continue to create content. You're not just gonna leave them hanging. So I highly suggest doing at least once a week and then schedule it. Make it like a Monday or a Tuesday and do that every Tuesday. When you create that schedule within your content, then people are gonna be expecting it and so people will come back and they're gonna keep watching. That's how you build a fan base and a subscribers and all that good stuff. 
So number 14 is try new things. Like you just wanna keep creating new content and just trying different things with your channel. For example, a lot of times when I'm shooting these kind of like talking videos, doing tutorials and all that, I'll be in my YouTube studio that I've built and then I will add B-roll to it. Whereas I wanna try something different. I wanna come out here to the desert and shoot it while I'm out here. So you just gotta constantly be trying new things with your channel because YouTube gives you the opportunity to kind of shoot whatever it is that you wanna shoot and be as creative as you wanna be. So use that to your advantage and just create awesome content and just try things. It'll keep your channel fresh, it'll inspire you to do different things, and maybe you'll find like a new style of content that you weren't producing before. I know I started out this channel just shooting vlogs, but now I shoot tutorials, now I shoot some short films, like I do a bunch of stuff, and it's opened so many more doors because I have just tried different things and seen what works well and seen what people like to watch. So number 15 is a super important one. One of the biggest mistakes that you can make is just doing it for the money. And that's kind of one of those things that this is a creative platform where yes, you can make money and you can make this a job. Like there is a lot of potential in YouTube, but if you get started because you think you're gonna get rich and famous off of being a YouTuber, then think again, this actually takes a lot of work, takes a lot of time. And for my first year of YouTubing, my first year, which I shot almost 200 videos, I made like $48. So in reality, like you're not gonna make a ton of money right away. Now there is potential, like I'm saying, you can make money doing this, but if you do it for the money, then I would say go to a different profession. You do this because you like creating content. You do this because you wanna be part of this community. You don't do this for the money. But there is a potential to make money doing it. That is a big positive. Number 16 is just not being human. We are all people, so act like you're a person, don't be a robot. Also like have a conversation, like talk to your viewers, talk to your subscribers, be a person and actually be part of their lives as much as you're a part of their lives. Because like people want to follow other people and that's why YouTube has become so big is that we're all individual creators. So one of the things you need to do is actually be a person when you're creating content on this platform. Number 17 is just writing new product waves. And this is for everyone who wants to like shoot products to get views. Now, I'm not saying don't do this. Like as you could tell on my channel, I'll shoot products, I'll shoot the new thing that's coming out. But if all of your content is just like the newest product, then you're always relying on the new products to basically drive your channel. And that's not necessarily the way to go about doing it. I have an idea that you wanna create content that people will search for now, but also content that people will search for, you know, down the road because that's the beauty of YouTube it is a giant search engine and your videos live as long as you keep them up on your channel. Another big mistake is when you're just stressing about gear and having the latest gear. That's not important. What's most important is the content that you create, the stories that you create. It's not about the gear. I mean, the gear is obviously the fun part. We like talking about gear. We like getting new gear, but you could shoot with your phone. You could shoot with your GoPro. You could shoot with whatever camera you have right now and start creating content. You don't have to have the latest and greatest at all times to create good content on YouTube. So number 19, we got two left guys. Number 19 is burnout. So this has been a popular topic in the YouTube community recently. And it goes along with number 20 as well, which is impatience. So what happens is creators will get impatient. They want to see that subscriber count jump. They wanna see the ad revenue coming in. They wanna have everything start happening, but it doesn't just happen overnight. It takes time, it takes time to build your channel, it takes time to build your following before you actually can get to that whatever level it is that you're trying to get to. And a lot of times that's never ending. So what happens is creators get burned out. They get they, they create too much content, they're on too much, they're always having to be engaged, creating content, sharing it, always being in part of the hustle, which in reality, when you work that much, you're gonna burn out. You can't do that. You have to have balance. You have to be able to take time for yourself and do the things that you wanna do that are outside like the camera. Like this is one aspect of your life, but there's a lot of different aspects of your life. There's people in your life. So you don't wanna burn yourself out by being impatient and just always focusing on creating. You need to give yourself some work-life balance because this at the end of the day, yes, it's fun, but it's still a job. But you can't do it effectively all the time, at all times of the day, every day, 365 days a year, because eventually you'll burn out and you'll get tired of it and you won't wanna do it anymore. So create yourself a schedule, be realistic in what you can create 
and just have fun creating. And guys, that's the 20 biggest mistakes that I see creators making on YouTube. It's like I said down below in the description, I have some additional videos that cover some of the different topics that we talked about in this video, so you could see some more videos on that. And guys, I also have a video all about how to make more money with ad revenue on your channel. I'll put a link down below in the description of that. And guys, that is it. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of awesome filmmaking tutorials, YouTube tutorials, camera reviews, a bunch of different stuff on this channel. I also like to do adventure films, go places like this and go exploring. I also have the creatorfilmschool.com, which is a nuts to bolts guide on how to make money as a creator and do this for a living. So guys, make sure you check that out at creatorfilmschool.com. And you know what? I'll see you on the next one.